Encore lesson 28. Uh, we're talking about multiplying with decimals and uh, again, some, some more review, but the, the question that we really have is we can multiply and we can multiply with multiple digits, but when we multiply with decimals, we need to make sure that we understand <clears throat> excuse me, where a decimal goes at the end. And I have a very simple rule for this. However many digits to the right of a decimal, so however many digits to the right of a decimal in your problem, is how many you'll have in your answer. So if I look at my first problem, five and 69 hundredths times seven and eight tenths. Again, we're multiplying and dividing. We don't have to line up our decimals here. And in fact, I think it's confusing to. So only in addition and subtraction do you line up your decimals. But in your multiplication and division, you just put your numbers out. And I multiply eight across here and I multiply seven across everything. They've shown all of that for you here. The question I want to know is how many digits will I have to the right of my decimal and my answer? Well, I've got one, two, three in my problem. So if I look here, my correct answer is 44 and 382 thousandths. I've got one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three in my answer. So again, double check your decimal uh, when we look at this. The, they're asking you to estimate first. If you need to, great. If you want to, great, unless they're specifically making you write out the estimation. I'm not requiring you to, but it's a good tool to have. And most of us do it anyway. We just don't actually write it out and talk about what it would be. So if I have my estimation here, if I have four and eight tenths times one and seven tenths, well, four and eight tenths is very close to five. One and seven tenths is close to two. Therefore, I know my answer is going to be somewhere around 10, but I'm dealing with decimals, so it's probably going to be, um, in this case, both of these numbers are lower than what I averaged, so it's going to be a little less than 10. But if I'm somewhere around 10, that's good. That's important because if I don't know where to put my decimal and I end up with an answer that has in the hundreds or an answer that's like 2.49 or something like that, I know I'm way off. I have to redo the problem. So I'm going to rewrite it 4 and 8 tenths times 1 and 7 tenths. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna multiply first with my ones place and multiply across everything up top, and then I'm gonna multiply in the tens place and multiply everything else up across. So I have seven times eight, which is 56. Seven times four, which is 28, plus five, which gives me 33. Now, seven times four and eight tenths, is not 336, but I'm not worried about where my decimal goes now. I'm gonna keep that decimal place till the end, okay? Now, I've done the seven, so I multiply across. This one's easy. It's important that I bring down a zero, though, when I move into the tens place, because I'm not actually multiplying four and eight tenths by one, am I? I'm multiplying it now by 10. So I need a zero just to hold that place value so I don't make a mistake. One times eight gives me eight. One times four gives me four. Again, four and eight tenths and one and seven tenths, I know that they estimate to be somewhere around 10, maybe a little less, but I'm dealing with 336 plus 480. There's no way that that's gonna be correct. So if I end up with something that's seven or 800, I know I've made a mistake and I know that my decimal needs to be corrected. So I add them up, six plus zero is six, eight plus three is 11, and I carry the one over. Four plus three is seven, plus one is eight, and I have 816, so where does my decimal go? Simple, I have two digits to the right of a decimal in my problem. One and four and eight tenths, the eight is to the right of the decimal. The seven is to the right of the decimal and one and seven tenths. Therefore, I'm gonna have one, two, one, two in my answer. Eight and 16 hundreds, and is eight and 16 hundreds close to 10? Yep, it's somewhere in the ballpark. If I made a mistake and I move it over here in front of the eight, I have less than one, nowhere close to 10. If I have it over here after the one, well then I have 81, that's nowhere close to 10. So I can just very easily, boom, put my number right in here. Let's do uh, one more. We'll go down here and look at order of operations. Because I'd like to do the real world application with you, which is the most important part in all of this, is how does this make sense to me? Why is this important, okay? So the first one that we have, we have 13, they're not asking us to estimate, so we don't have to do that. Uh, I have, I'll write it out for you here, Amnes. 
Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. In that order, no exceptions. First thing, parentheses. All right, so I have 13 and 1 10 times 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3. So 13 and 1 10 times 3 is not 393. I have one digit to the right in 13 and 1 10th, the right of a decimal, so I'm going to have one in my answer, 39.3. So if I go back and I were to use estimation, 3 times 13, well, 3, 13 is somewhere close to 10, so 3 times 10 gives me 30. I should be somewhere in the ballpark of 30. 39 would fit that bill. 393, no. 3 and 93 hundredths, also no. So now I have uh, 39.3 plus 5 and 21 hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and write this 5 and 21 hundredths underneath. And be very careful here because your decimal lines up right there. I want to make sure then that I add a zero for a placeholder. So this is really 39 and 30 hundredths plus 5 and 21 hundredths. I'm dealing in hundredths so that they're the same thing. Otherwise, I could easily make a mistake. Zero plus one is one, three plus two is five. Nine plus five is 14, carry the one, three plus one is four. Correct answer, 44 and 51 hundredths. So if I, if I know that I'm going to be somewhere in the ballpark of 30 plus 5, okay, I need something that's near 35 in some rational fashion. Can't be in the hundreds, can't be less than 1. 44 fits that bill, somewhere in the tens. Last thing I want to go over with you real quick here, Blaine. Blaine exchanges $100 for yen before going to Japan. If each U.S. dollar is worth 88 and 353 thousandths yen, how many yen should Blaine receive? Well, let's make sense of this problem, really. Blaine, I'm sure, is a very nice person, but we don't really need to know that he's here. $100 exchanged for yen. It really doesn't matter to me if he does it before going to Japan, after Japan, at the airport, uh, at McDonald's for some weird reason he wants to pay with yen. It doesn't matter to me. I have $100 for yen. Each US dollar is worth 88 and 353 thousandths yen. That's important, okay? And I want each because I know that one dollar is worth that. How many yen does that make? Really doesn't matter if Mr. W is doing this, if you're doing this, if mom's doing this, if Blaine's doing this, I'm sure he's a nice person, but we don't really care. We've broken our problem down into, I'm at the airport, I have $100 and I need yen. Well, how many yen Anybody who's traveled internationally knows that this happens. How many yen is he gonna get? Well, one dollar gives me 88 and 353 thousandths yen. 88 and 353 thousandths yen. And how many dollars am I giving them? I'm giving them $100. Now, a lot of us could look at that and say, oh, I can do that in my head. So now we know we're changing international currency using decimals in our head. A lot of us could do that because we're multiplying by 100. I'm going to write it out anyway. I know that 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then I'm placeholder, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. You probably don't have to write this part out, but I'm going to. Now, placeholder, placeholder, because I'm not multiplying by 1, I'm multiplying by 100. So I have my two zeros for placeholders. Now, I have 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 5. 1 times 3, 1 times 8, 1 times 8. Again, if you need help with your multiples of 1, come see me. We'll review those, but I'm shortcutting this for the sake of time in the video. Zeros. Zero. 0 plus 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 plus 0 plus 5 is 5. 0 plus 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 plus 8 is 8 and 8. Now, do I have $100? And that would then be equal to 8,835,300 yen. No, not. It's still an impressive number, but not that big. So how many digits to the right of a decimal do I have in my problem? One, two, three. So how many will I have in my answer? One, two, three. He is going to get 80, or I'm sorry, 8,835 and three tenths yen. Now, I'm sure that a number of you, uh, right when we broke the problem apart, saw that you could multiply back with 100, and then you're just moving the decimal uh, over by how many places, how many zeros you have in your answer. Perfectly acceptable, but 
You've got to show some work somewhere. Even if you wrote it and said, okay, well, I have 8, 88 and 30, 353,000 yen times 100. So I'm going to move it over two places and I get 8835.3. That's still showing your work. That's telling me what you did. And if you have a mistake, we can easily find it, okay? Show your work, multiplying with decimals. Make sure that when you go back through, you've double checked if you're estimating that you're somewhere in the ballpark of your original estimation, but also you've checked that however many digits you have to the right of a decimal in your problem, you have in your answer. And that's gonna make sure that you have at least somewhere really close to the correct answer.